Hi everyone, very good morning on this uh, Saturday, depending where you are, it could be rainy or nice and uh, hot. <laughs> uh, welcome to our uh, another series uh, of uh, virtual talks, uh, this one on the topic of pressure injuries in the elderly. Um, so since the start of the year, we've been hosting a couple of talks on the, on the overall theme of aging well. So we have so far covered things about exercise, mental wellness, Parkinson's, LPA, and also a lot of um, elder care topics, um, including today's topic. So our idea, uh, our idea is to build a community that is keen to learn together. So thanks everyone for joining us. Um, also welcome to, for, uh, uh, to PT Shan today. Um, for those of you who joined us, the last session, very energetic session, I see she also has a fan club of people who have, <laughs> who have showed up today. So um, yeah, so PT Shan, we are so glad to have you today. Um, I'm just going to give a quick introduction about um, uh, our company and also uh, Peishan, who is our speaker today. So from our side, uh, we are the Golden Concepts. If this is the first time that you're joining us, we're very happy to have you here. Um, the Golden Concepts, uh, we are mainly, uh, we curate a range of quality elder care products to enable aging well. So in particular, we focus on maximizing mobility and independence in our golden years. But besides products, we also aim to create events such as these and content to educate both caregivers and seniors about key matters relating to aging. Because we believe that education is key to aging well. So whether it's it for your parents or for ourselves as caregivers, it will be very important for us to know. And um, just a gentle reminder that this session will be recorded. So we'll be keeping uh, all participants' audio off. Um, we may have some time for Q&A, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But if you have any questions at any point in time, uh, you can always click on the, uh, the message function at the bottom of the screen, and then you should be able to send a message to, to everyone in the chat group. And we will get uh, PT Shan to cover a couple of the questions later on. Yeah. So on to uh, our guest of honor today, <laughs> PT Shan. Uh, just a quick introduction about her is actually, uh, I, we tried to shorten it already, but she does have quite a lot of accolades. So I'll just quickly touch on them. Uh, she graduated with a bachelor degree of honors in physiotherapy and also a diploma in traditional Chinese medicine trainer. So since 2011, um, her focus has been looking into biological, psychological, social, and spiritual aspects of health. She believes every patient and their caregiver should be and can be empowered and able to own their health. So she's currently working as a private home physio, providing a holistic rehabilitation for elderly patients who are frail at risk of falls, suffer a stroke, and those who need palliative care. In addition, she's also an adjunct lecturer with uh, Republic Polytechnic because she hopes to pass on the knowledge and skill sets to the next generation of professionals to impact even more families. So to date, she has founded the Neurodevelopmental Treatment Special Interest Group. She chairs multiple journal clubs, designed and conducted training for allied health professionals, therapy assistants, students, caregivers, volunteers, and members of the public on numerous platforms, locally and internationally. So with all that said, right, she, the fact that she has some time to spend with us on a Saturday morning, we are very glad. Um, and also the, the fact that this is your second time with us, Piti Shan. So um, yeah, so over to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> I see some familiar faces uh, from the last session <laughs> from my fan club. <laughs> if I tell you something, okay, here I've uh, got doctors, nurses also. So later, uh, if you've got any question, I just shoot and ask. Uh, so there's no such thing as stupid question, okay? Just ask, okay? So the more you ask, the more I can share. Ah, uh, that is always my, my, my philosophy, okay? So, uh, before we begin, I just want to uh, thank um, Golden Concept for organizing this. Uh, this is my second time, but it won't be the last time. <laughs> okay, so uh, more topics up ahead. Okay, the whole idea is to educate ourselves. Okay, so um, just some disclaimer, disclaimer, okay. Um, the reason why I'm giving this talk today is because um, of, my, of my background. I used to work in Stanley's Hospital, and before I, I quit the hospital, I was in a wound ward. Wound ward, that means everybody uh, got wound, some sort of wound. You don't need to see a wound, you enter the ward and you can smell the wound first. Okay, so um, it, you have to understand, PT Shan very tan xiao one. <laughs> Meaning, uh, PT Shan see blood, right? <laughs> it will faint that kind. <laughs> but, 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 
But in God's grace, uh, you know, I have been in the ward for six months and um, the nurses have been very, very patient with me. And my patients have been very willing to share with me what are their thoughts, what are their feelings. And I do see a lot of caregivers and their families struggling. So um, then I came out to elder care to do home therapy. And I see a lot more cases like so, you know, like when, when you go home, suddenly ah, yeah, you're left on your own, right? Hey, how, how, how are we going to manage? How are we going to cope? And then, oh no, you know, my loved one just got a stroke or like advanced Parkinson's and they are bit bound now. And there's no one, they can turn themselves. And over time, you know, uh, injuries like pressure injury start to, to kick in. And that's very sad because um, I have seen wound that is as small as a cut, but as big as a feast, as deep as like 5 cm. I'm not kidding you, I, I see this in my own eyes and it scares me a lot. Um, but I think I think there's a lot of value because in the last 10 years, I think so many people have taught me so many things, be it patient, caregiver, nurses, or even vendors. So that's why I want to share with you today. Okay. Um, but you have to really do your homework also. La. <laughs> this is just a spark. La. <laughs> okay. So I think uh, during my talk, right, always feel free to take uh, your handphone out and scan the QR code. Okay. Don't worry. I'm not. not <laughs> not cute, COVID scan in, <laughs> but scan for resources, okay? <laughs> uh, so if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, this deck of sites will also be sent uh, to the participants as well. So, uh, but yeah, just feel free, okay? Okay, so today this is what we're going to talk about. All right, now, please take out your phone and scan this. Why? Because whatever I'm going to say next, uh, they are mainly taken from this material. And who created this material? wound nurses right specialists who are you know doing wound dressing every single day is backed up by studies from overseas and uh it, it just in case you're curious you know like um sending hospital is a wound center in singapore and uh, they organize wound conferences every year and they train the wound nurses from all over singapore okay so this material developed by them as well okay in conjunction with moh okay so what is treasure injury? Okay, now I'm going to ask everybody to do an experiment with me. Okay, I want you to, okay, take up your hands, okay? And you know where is your pulse, right? Okay, it's along your thumb area. I want you to press the part where there is skin and bone. So the most bony part, just press and hold. Okay, you must press and hold. Uh. This, this, this experiment is very, 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 very important. Okay, so press and hold it there until I ask you to stop. So that means every time that I'm talking from now onwards, right, you have to hold position like this. Okay, all right. You must feel it. If you can't just feel this, uh, then you don't know how a big bound patient feels. Okay, so hold it, uh, hold it. Uh. I'm going to talk. I'm going to continue talking. Uh. Uh, okay, so... Hold it there, hold it there. I see some of you letting go already. Uh. <laughs> what, what, what do you sign up for on a Saturday morning? <laughs> okay, so pressure injury, right? Pressure injury is commonly known as bed sore, pressure sore. Okay, now what does it mean? It just means that you're cutting off the blood supply and that part of the skin cells, all the cells over there start to die off. It can be skin, it can be fat, it can be muscle, it can be bones. Okay, so a lot of times there are three types of uh, pressure, right? Depending on the direction, it's called a different name, right? So if it's a direct one, it's called pressure. If it's like uh, moving along the same direction, kind of like forces, it is called a shear. And if it goes against each other, it's called a friction force. Now, why is force so scary, right? It's because, take a look at the lines, the blue and the red lines. The part whereby there is a force, that blood vessel usually will break. Okay, they're very, very fragile kind of like uh, connective tissue. Okay, so when this happens, and it happens a long, long time, okay, we're not talking about just what uh, I've been talking for like two minutes while you're holding. Hey, don't let go, don't let go. I, you, I see something letting go. Yeah, like, continue hold it there. Uh, I'm not done yet, I'm not done yet. Huh? Okay, now. Why is that so? Okay, now if you open up your hands now, what do you see? What do you see? You can unmute yourself. Uh. 
<laughs> in my session, there's no such thing as a radio talk show. <laughs> you can ask me a and, and shout out answer. What do you see? Anyone? Color, change color. Change, ah, change what color? Change what color? Like, like this. Oh, color. What? Very good. Very good. Ah, some people say red. Huh? Very good. Some people say white. Okay, now I'm going to get you to do them. Uh, uh, uncomfortable also. Uncomfortable. Ah, very good. You see, uh, I only get everybody to hold for two minutes, right? Bye-bye. Ah, Barbara, yes, exactly. Okay, so how do you tell if you have a pressure injury? Okay, so it's just like wearing a shoe, okay? First of all, you will have redness, right? You press already got redness, right? Okay, next thing is this. When you press again and you let go, you see that it becomes white. And then when the moment you let go, it becomes red again. Ah, very good. I see head nodding. Ah, very good. <laughs> hey, for those of you who are not doing that, <laughs> you'll be more fun if you continue doing it. Okay, so when someone has a pressure injury, when they press again, right, there is no change in color. Then when they let go, right, it won't change back either. Then you know it's a pressure injury already. Okay, it's just like, uh, you have uh, you wear a new pair of shoes, got redness, then becomes blister. Got blister already, it bursts, right? Then got pain, right? Uh, so, you see, for us, right, when you seriously do this experiment, you feel pain. Fair enough. Then after that, you feel numbness. Fair enough. Uh, so, there's a change in how you feel, and there's, of course, pain. But I tell you, there is one stage of pressure injury where there's no pain because there's no more nerves. Okay? Now, if you touch your skin right now, what do you think? Is it warmer than the surrounding tissue or a bit colder? That's not when you press already, right? That's two minutes, right? Is it warmer or cooler? Cooler, cooler. Some say cooler. Anyone else? Any other feelings? Okay. So you're not wrong in saying that, okay, that it feels a bit cooler. Right? Because you cut out blood supply, ma. blood brings heat. Ma. Right, but I tell you, uh, there are certain kind of pressure injury that is so bad, it's infected, it becomes very hot to touch. Of course, you compare to the other hand, or you can compare to the surrounding tissue and see, eh, something not right, eh? right? Okay, now, pressure injury spots, the skin integrity, do you think it's good or bad? Ah, okay, I can telepathy your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear any sound, but I hear you. <laughs> Usually, the texture is not very right. good. Right? Sometimes you see the skin, right? Eh? How come flaky, flaky, very dry, and it looks abnormal, right? And then that is some telltale sign, really. Okay? Now, we ask ourselves this question Wow, who will get pressure injury, right? Usually, the older people. Okay, why? Because the, the, the skin, is it thin or thick? Thin. thin. Ah, see, ah, youngster like me, very thick skin. <laughs> but I thought I'm not different. Ah. They are paper skin. Ah. Paper thin. skin. Ah. Okay, so they don't have a lot of cushion also. Ah. That's why the pressure goes in and, and, and do a lot of damage. People have medical condition, right? Ever heard of diabetes? Mm -hmm. Ah. A lot of uh, sugar in your blood weakens your tissue integrity. It will break apart easily and it doesn't heal very well, right? Okay, people who are overweight, extra weight, extra force on that spot, right? Uh, people who are underweight, they are like no cushion. So it's bone on the seat, bone on the mattress, okay? So they will also be susceptible. Now, people who don't move, and for you and I, once it hurts, we let go, right? But you think someone with advanced stage dementia or Parkinson, they can move by themselves? They, no, they, they are not even aware that there is a pain. They, even if they are aware, they cannot react to it, right? And then last thing is people with incontinence. It can be urinary or bowel incontinence, okay? Now, why are we so concerned? Okay, okay, at this juncture, uh, uh, those of you who eat breakfast already are uh, uh, so sorry about it. Huh? I'm going to show you all some real photograph, real photograph, okay? <laughs> really gruesome. Uh, this is one of the reasons why when I see it, I run away. 
<laughs> but after six months in the womb, what I go in, mm, I think it's stage, stage, stage. <laughs> then the nurse said, it's not, not, not bad. Uh. <laughs> Something like that. Uh. <laughs> but, uh, okay. So, uh, just a, a second to think in, okay? Now, we're looking at four stages. Okay, now, if you, if you follow me, right? If you follow my cursor, we're going to look at stage one first. If we take a look at which level it affects, right? Stage one is really what I did to all of you just now in a two minutes, whereby I cut I cut off your blood supply using your own hands. <laughs> See a <thousand> siren, you know. <laughs> okay, so that is on the surface. Now today, if you and I were to go into a operating theater on lying on metal bed, four hours later we will also develop pressure injury even though we are young, but it's because we are not moving, okay? So, stage one, redness. Stage two, you go down a little bit long, big, bigger, right? Deeper, this is where you can see a little bit of this. Uh, it may or may not break, okay? Now, stage three, if you see this yellow color thing, hey, make a guess, what is that, what is that? Make a guess, come. Yellow, yellow, mm -hmm. yellow cooling color. Are you not bad? Not bad. What else can it be? What else? Hey, anybody mm. eat chicken and uh, you should know what is yellow color. <laughs> Please, sorry, uh, I hope I hope you all will continue eating healthy for me. I'm a vegetarian now. Uh. You're Pisces. Hey, you're Pisces. Pisces. <laughs> okay, so uh, not a bad idea to turn vegetarian for the weekend. <laughs> is okay, it so pass? Ah, okay, that is good. A uh, good, good attempt. What else can it be? Below the skin. Hmm. Nerve. Nerve. Uh, nerve. Mm. Yeah. Wow, very good. See, uh, you all don't need to attend a uh, degree course, you also know. Okay, <laughs> so yes, yellow, fatty tissue. But a lot of times, before you hit the fatty tissue, there was nerve endings at the dermis layer already. Okay. Um, and you are right in saying that in severe cases, there will be pus. What is pus? Pus is just our, our body cells fighting the infection. And when wow, both parties die, you know, at the, at the war scene, like, wow, all soldiers die. Uh, in this case, it appears as pus, yellowish and whatnot. Okay. So that's a sign that our body is trying to fight. Uh, foreign body like bacteria. Okay, so now if we take a look at stage four, wah say, take a look at that man. If I a, you see the silvery silvery thing and the white color thing. Can you make a guess what is that? <laughs> ah, what what what? I, I hear I hear ligament. Okay, what else? Water. Very good. Water. Uh, okay, water is flowy. Uh. This one is solid. Maybe the bone. bone. Ah, wow, 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 wow. This, this, this class is highly talented. Okay, very good. Sometimes it, you can see bone, but a lot of times, right, I think what I've seen is capsule, joint capsule. So, um, when bone and bone come together, what, what wraps the bone together is joint capsule and they are silvery. So sometimes joint capsule is made of ligaments. Sometimes there are tendons attaching to it. Just, just like today when you go and eat chicken drumstick, right? Ah, you see the silvery thing attaching to your bone? Ah, that is the deepest layer. Now, if the wound is severe enough, right? There's some, it's, okay, more, more photos coming up. Ah, more photos coming up. But, uh, okay. So if you take a look at this, this heel part, right? Sometimes uh, the nurse will say it's unstageable. Why? Because there seems like there's a covering at the surface, right? But take a look at the surrounding skin. You think this is normal? Who thinks this is normal? Please raise your hand. Not normal. Not normal, right? Not normal. And I'll tell you, right, it's like oh, literally uh, opening a can of worms. Why? Because once you open this, layer right inside is all those fluffy things that may you may see here so a lot of times i want my my 
some family tell me, eh, nothing why, it's all closed up. It, that's not a, a deep wound, ma. But sometimes uh, when you see enough of wound, right, and then you see the surrounding like tissues, right, you're like, eh, that don't look normal. <laughs> so, and, and, and therefore this is called unstageable. Until they open it up and they go and dig deeper, right all the way to the bone, and uh, then you see AO stage 4. Okay, so a lot of times people say, hey, so, so what's the big deal about pressure injury? Right? What's the big deal of having pressure sore? Pressure sore itself is not a big problem. It's the complication that's the biggest problem. It's just like today, you have a stroke. You won't die from stroke, you know? You'll die from pneumonia because of the stroke. Make sense? Today you have Parkinson's. Yeah, you won't die from that, you know? You'll die from lung infection. You get what I mean? Right? So, if you have a pressure injury, that's so scary, right? It's a cut. So what? The problem is when it's infected. That's what we call sepsis. What is sepsis? Sepsis is whereby bacteria from a wound enter your bloodstream and infect everything else. Now, what's so scary about this? What will you be worried about? If today you have an infection in, uh, yeah, in which organ will you be starting to worry? Lung. Okay, Lung. good. Good, Jasmine. What else? Who else? Come, come. Give it a try. Heart. Very good. The heart. Okay. What else? What else can be so scary when it's infected? Liver. Very good. Liver. I hear kidney as well. What else? All organs. <laughs> Oh yeah, Patricia got it all right, man. <laughs> this like <laughs> option A, B, C, and long song right? <laughs> You're right. You're right. Because it's that infection, because the blood vessel system travels all around the whole body, right? It can infect anything. And if it hits all the major organs that all of us just hit, that's gonna be a big problem. Right? Cellulitis, okay. Every time you see I T I S, it means inflammation, right? Infection. It just means the skin get infected. But yeah, but price it may get worse. Right? Abscess is just talking about a, a big boil inside got a lot of pus, right? Bone infection without say, right? This wound that you are seeing on the screen now. Make a guess, why is it? Which body part? Name cap. Cap. What else? Oh, who who any any anyone else wants to give it a try? Where else is this? Anchor, anchor. Backside. backside, backside, okay. The one on the right side is backside, correct. Now, the, this, this, this four pictures, where is it? Kneecap, mm -hmm. ankle, the foot, ankle. the foot, yes, mm -hmm. yes. very good. The heel, yes, <laughs> ladies heel. and gentlemen, yeah. this is the heel, okay. Now, you see, if this wound gets deeper, when we stand, right, you stand on the heel, right. Mm -hmm. So can this person wait there? Can or cannot? Put a um, put like maybe say this person is 60 kg, put 30 kg on this heel. You think possible? Ah, very good. I, I see head shaking, ah, very good. Now, no, if someone so. no longer put weight on the heel, can they stand? Can they transfer? Can they walk? Not, no. Not. Then no. what will happen to them? Mobility down. Yeah. Yes. Immobility. Yes, very good. So if you are bed bow, wheelchair bow, how is that going to help a pressure injury? Is it going to get worse or get better? Worse. Good. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Very good, everybody. You're responding to me. Very good, very good. So now you know, okay? I, and I tell you something, uh, you see all this, right? I give you the price tag, okay? I give you reality, yeah. Stage one, maybe heal in about three, five days. Like just like a blister, right? You stop wearing that shoe, you'll recover. Stage two, okay, and maybe stage one costs you about five dollars. Like, apply the antiseptic cream, huh? Stage two, got blister, eh? Maybe take maybe one, two weeks to heal, huh? Maybe give you another five, seven dollars plus a plaster, like, huh? Plus cream. Stage three. Stage three, your dressing uh, got at least three layers already. First layer, okay, so you have to uh, apply some sort of cream or whatnot with medical component inside. The second layer may be to absorb any pus, any excessive fluid. 
the third layer is to cover it up, like for example, micropora or, or quick bandage. Mm. You see, these three layers of dressing right, will cost you at least $15. Around there. La. Okay, 10 to 15 la, maybe. Okay, and that's just for one dressing. Make a guess, how long do you think this will heal? Come, come, everybody, let's try. Uh. How long do you think this one will take to heal? Two to three months. Oh, okay. Ew. Patricia, not bad, not bad. Yeah, six months. Uh. Oh, very good. We've got very realistic numbers here. Uh. Very good. Uh, okay. Six months. Very, very good numbers. Okay, so you're right. Uh. We, it takes months. And depending on this person's body, uh, we will see the few, a few uh, factors that affect healing later. Okay, so if it takes a few months, okay, and you're as assuming you do dressing every single day, how much will that cost? I give you a very simple one, uh, maybe say um, $10 per, per, per wound dressing. That's assuming that your, your wound dressing is not sought by your urine or your feces, right? Then you just do one a day. $10 a day, uh, one month, 30 days, that's $300, right? $300 times six months, maybe. Thousand eight. Yeah. Thousand eight. Yeah. That is the amount of money, right? You can use to buy a hospital bed with air mattress, right? <laughs> <laughs> you you totally can prevent this from happening. And then if you use senior mobility fund, right? Well, you still can get wheelchair and seat cushion. Uh, and then all those equipment can last for years. Okay? Now, that is the price that you're paying for stage 3. Around there or even more. Depending on how often you change. And if you go to a hospital, you haven't add in things like manpower, uh, all your nurses doing all your wound dressing, don't need to pay money, is it? <laughs> okay, now, stage 4. Make a guess. How long do you think it will last? Half a year. <laughs> What yeah. else? One year. What? Okay, what else? Okay, what else? Or not even heal. longer because infections now and then. May Very not heal. good. Very good. Now, you're right in saying that it will take at least half a year, at least, huh, with professional nurses' care. Okay. I have patients who stay with me in the wound ward. I was in the wound ward for six months, right? They were in the wound ward for six months, you know, or more. <laughs> because when I left, they're still there. Okay, and one day in hospital is $300 at least. Lah. Uh, can you go and calculate how much that is? Oh, I tell you. Is it worth it or not? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I tell you, someone say, hey, it may not heal. It's true. It's true. Because as a home therapist, right, that's what I see on a daily basis. Where patients' wound doesn't heal, and somehow they will catch another infection, right? And you're right in saying that a lot of times the wound get infected and infected it doesn't heal at all, right? The, the bacteria just stays there, you know? And once there's bacteria, it doesn't heal very well, right? Then what's worse? Why wow, you got other infection like lung infection? And then, then you bye-bye, right? That is if you're lucky, yeah. but there are many families, right? With, they're still hanging on, you know? A lot of patients are still having that fire in them and you want to keep on breathing. But with this kind of sore, stage four sore. Okay, so all these right can be preventable. And that's why we are so hard on prevention is better than cure. Okay, so um, this is something that if you ever forget, right, just remember this, okay? Injury. Okay? If someone has incontinence, be it from a stroke or from old age, of a spinal cord injury, first thing first, keep clean. Okay? Number two, you clean already, you must pet dry gently. Some people, wah, wah, like nobody business, you know. <laughs> you remember, their skin is paper thin skin. Uh. You cannot be so rough with them, must pet, pet dry. <laughs> you know, SK2, pet, 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 pet. <laughs> Same thing, okay? Pet, pet. <laughs> okay? Now, before you put on your diapers, right? You have to make sure that skin is moisturized. Okay, so make a guess. Thin, uh, dry skin is stronger or moist skin is stronger? 
Rice cream is stronger. Moist cream. Moist cream. Moist cream. Moist cream. Ah, if you today if you go to a cold country, right, then it's very cold, it's very dry, right? Then your skin break, right? Then if infection go in, then it becomes a wound, you know. Ah, so you have to keep dry skin moist because a moist skin is healthy skin, right? Now we go one one step further. If you know that your loved one has incontinence, urinary incontinence, and it's constantly wet, right? Then you want to form a barrier between the skin and the dirty stuff. This is where you apply something called barrier cream. Okay. Uh, sometimes the nurses, depending on uh, the style of the nurse, lah, you know, they will tell you, hey, you apply moisturizer, then put barrier. Some people say just barrier is enough. Um, so they will be the best person to ask, right? Nurses. Okay. Now. We move on to nutrition, right? Okay, make a guess. Hydration important to skin health or not? Who says yes? Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. oh, not bad, not bad. I see some hands. I see some hands. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. Today, if you and I are dehydrated, our skin are still too. Yeah? Mm -hmm. ah, very good. So if you have enough hydration, it means your skin will be supple. Then we break. No, it won't break so easily. Right? Now, if you take a look at protein, vitamin C, and zinc, these are very crucial uh, for our skin health. Okay? Now, every part of our body is built by protein, right? Our, our muscles are protein. If you've got muscle, you've got cushion, right? Uh, then will you have that pressure injury as easily? No, you won't. Right? So it's just like, Say uh, vitamin D is the building block for bones. I would say vitamin C is the building block for skin. Make sense? Okay. Now, zinc is also another component. And if you take all of this, right, you'll find that hey, even for yourself, uh, you cut, <laughs> I don't know whether you're a game winner, huh? today you cut yourself on purpose and start drinking a lot of vitamin C. <laughs> and see whether it heal better or not. <laughs> but don't do that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Later people complain. This this therapist tell you. <laughs> okay, so point proven now. Eh? If but if you're ever in doubt, okay, always call out a dietitian. Uh, in fact, people who are overweight or underweight, remember we said about how is it that they are susceptible to more pressure injury. Get a dietitian in, balance it out a little bit. Okay, now J is for just move. Like I say, you know, just now when we are put, put pressing on our wrist and it forms a redness. As long as someone moves, they change the pressure point. And this is something that the patient can do, or you can help them to do. Right? So we'll go into this later in more details. But in general, remember this, uh, the magic tool. Okay? In bed, every two hours, do a turning. In chair, every two, 20 minutes, shift, uh, shift a bathtub. Okay, everybody try this. Uh. Now shift, put, okay, you're sitting, you're sitting now. Everybody's sitting, right? Okay, but on the chair. Now shift air all your weight to your left cheek, butt cheek. Ah, very good. Now shift to the right. Ah, now do very fast. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that we did uh, a math group dance today. <laughs> okay, so there we go. There we go. Just move, right? Use pressure relief surfaces. Now, this is also another one that we are going to talk about later with a lot more product uh, equipment as well. Okay. Um, but if you're ever in doubt, you can call an occupational therapist who is an expert in, in uh, equipment and a physiotherapist like myself or a podiatrist. Podiatrist is the best person to ask when it comes to footwear, when it comes to pressure injury with regards to the foot area. Okay. Now, R is for reassessing. Now, the best time to do this is when you're showering or sponging your loved ones. Okay, so this is something that, like even for my father, right, Every he has diabetes, he, and, and what he does is, he's he very kiasi, you know, after hearing all the stories from me, right, <laughs> I scare him a lot of stories from the wound ward, you know. <laughs> then, then every night uh, before he sleep, right, he'll take a mirror, and then he'll check underneath his foot, and then he will apply all the cream, you know, <laughs> very icy one. <laughs> eh, but, until now, not the issue, right? So you see, if my dad can do it, he's a very lazy man, uh, by the way. If he can do it, so can he. Yeah? It's just to scare them a little bit with all the stories about amputation. <laughs> okay, 
So you, uh, why is for seeking help early? Remember just now what we say? The earlier it is, the cheaper it is. Less suffering, right now. Now, yes. if anyone has any wound, okay, you don't go to any nurse. Ah. You have to go to a wound nurse. They, they, they train not for nothing. Ah, and, and their knowledge of the necessary wound product, uh, the skin type, the, the dryness or the moisture of the wound, they will make a big difference in the kind of dressing that they select. So always, always approach a wound nurse, a well-trained one. Ah. Okay, a podiatrist once again sometimes can do a bit of wound development and wound dressing. Okay, but they're really really hard to get. Um, food limb center is, is the one and only that I I've seen does this quite extensively. Um, of course there are many different podiatrists in other hospitals. Uh, waiting list is very long. Okay, okay. So enough for me. I'm gonna share with you real story. Well, I'm always a storyteller, right? <laughs> Okay. You should be seeing YouTube videos. Give me a thumbs up if you see it. Hi, Madam Tang. Can you share with us what was it like being a caregiver to your mother who suffered from multiple pressure injuries? It was a very tough and long journey. As my mom has problem moving around, as a result, she developed pressure ulcers on her lower back and her lower leg. It was not easy to care for my mom, especially with the added burdens of the pressure injuries that take many months to heal. To prevent the wounds from worsening, my helper and myself had to frequently turn my mom when she was lying down on the bed. When she was sitting, we have to regularly lift her up. Although she was not big size, but you also take a bit of effort to do that. Indeed, pressure injury needs a lot of effort to manage and treat, and it is not easy for the caregivers. To better help us understand patient perspective, could you share with us how your mother felt during her journey dealing with pressure injuries? Due to her medical conditions, my mom was not able to talk about her discomfort or pain. So when I changed the dressing for her, I think I could tell that she was uncomfortable. She was sometimes fringe when the old dressing were removed or when the new medications were applied onto the wounds. I imagine it was probably not easy for my mom to deal with the injuries or the discomfort. If I could turn back the time, I think I would definitely do more to prevent her from developing the injuries. Can you also share with us what helps you as a caregiver to manage your mother's condition? The advice from the healthcare professional given to me was very useful for me to manage my mom's condition. I also appreciated their willingness to help me throughout the journey as and when I needed more advice. Thanks for openly sharing your personal experience. Okay, so you hear what she has to say, right? And, and from my experience, is she thinks, but really, do we really know what the patient feels? That's, that's another question, right? Okay, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm not the best person to ask. In fact, I learned all of this from my nurses and um, always, always ask the nurses about this component. But I'm just going to share with you the general principle of managing a wound. Okay, first of all, pressure injury is called pressure. So take away the pressure. Lah. <laughs> Second thing, wound dressing means that you are trying to keep clean the area, clean it off from the slurs and whatnot, all the dead cells, Right? Uh, clean all. You see this silvery stuff? That's not skin, uh, by the way. I thought it was skin, no? Until my nurses tell me it's actually called biofilm. Biofilm is a layer uh, that um, bacteria resides on. It's like their house. So you have to remove their pen. If not, they will keep on multiplying. Right? So if the pen is in place, it will not heal as well because it's like an obstacle. But a lot of times, hey, ask you uh, when you cut your hand, the old people will tell you, put plaster or leave it open. Put plaster. <laughs> oh, leave it open. Let's dry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tell you, uh, uh, just now, just now, let me say, uh, leave it, uh, put plaster. I think you're very in already, very, very, very modern already. A lot of our older generation tell you, hey, uh, never, uh, keep it open. 
try the who need to breathe uh, breathe <laughs> more oxygen <laughs> but i tell you uh, that's really what i thought you know until my nurse tell me no <laughs> you have to keep the wound bed moist because you're keeping your cells healthy as well you're encouraging your healthy cells to multiply <laughs> instead of dry them out then you start to breach the gap in the wound right and so that's that's the newest thing uh, what, what they did was they did a lot of research and they found that if you keep the wound moist, it will heal better. Ah, so something for us to learn today, okay? But you just keep the skin around the wound dry and clean. Ah, okay. So keeping clean is one thing. Protecting it from more harm, more pressure, more forces ah, is another thing, right? Now, the third thing is, this is something that a lot of people don't know, is that the kind of wound product that you choose will really affect how fast the wound will heal. So this is where the nurses will go in to assess, okay, is there infection or no infection? Is this too wet or too dry? Then they will recommend, is it a cream, is it ointment, or is it a powder? So is it UV silver or just iodine? So there are many, many things going on. So always, always ask our nurses, okay? Now, everybody take out your phone, scan this QR code. Okay, I really like this toolkit because there is a clock, a turning clock. It will tell you at what time you turn which direction so that there is a common communication between you, your helper, or even other family members who come to visit. Right, so get people involved. Taking care of one person is the whole kampong's problem, not just one mate's problem. Okay, we're moving on. Huh? Scan already or not? Scan already or not? Wait, 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 hold for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Very good, very good. Uh, see, this Thank is you. the banner speak of unmuting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. Very good, Patricia. Very good. Okay, moving on. Uh. Okay, pressure release. Okay, take a look at this. Huh? This, I'm going to tell you this because later on, we're going to look at how to use an air mattress. This is called a dynamic air mattress. Right? Depending on your vendor, the model, every nearly normally it's around every seven to eight minutes, right? The cells will take turn to inflate and deflate, inflate, deflate, inflate, deflate. Okay, now this is the head of the bed. So when you buy an air mattress, you need to know like, where is the head, where is the toe? Ah, and then when you buy a dynamic air mattress, right, it means the pressure keep on changing and therefore you will not risk having a pressure injury. Okay? Simple, ah? Huh? Okay, good. Now, in bed, what are you going to do? Okay, so this is our, some basic principles. Uh, bear in mind, these videos will be available on YouTube soon. Okay? So, this is what we do to offload those pressure points that you see just now. So see again, uh, just now we point out to you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait, sorry. So this is this is the before. Okay, you see all the common areas? Bone on skin, skin on bone, try not. Okay, so after all of this, you will start to see them again. Huh? See? No more on a very hard surface. And that's exactly what we want. Okay? So the moment, and so be careful, huh? Why you put below dust matters? You don't want to cause more injury. Okay? Okay, so see again, uh, now all these points that we pointed out before, after we put on all this air mattress, all these pillows, I tell you, right, this is where pushy comes to play. <laughs> teddy bear, you know? <laughs> uh, Teddy bear also can help to pressure release, provide some comfort. <laughs> okay, so a few of my elders are there, their whole bed is full of pushies. 
So uh, just just reminder, if you missed the part about how to help a person sit upright, please refer to our video from before. Okay. And this is the after. You want to promote them in such a functional position that even though uh, you may be home alone, taking care of a loved one, you can still set them up to do something that they like. For example, having a good meal. But at the same time, offloading those pressure points so that you have a peace of mind. Okay? You want to pause this. Sorry, yeah. I don't know what happened. It's the previous slide. Yeah. I'm going to pause this here. Okay, you can take a photo. Okay. Now, there is a big difference between the bubble pad and the tube. If you got wound, you have to go for the tube. No wound, this is more comfortable. Okay. Can I? Okay, moving on. This one, the most important thing. You buy, you spend so much money to buy, if you don't know how to use this properly, right? Then no, no point. I, ha I have a real case. Huh? She's only about 40 kg. But then, right, the dial is, is put to 120 kg. And that dynamic air mattress costs her more pressure injury. So when you buy a air mattress, uh, you have to make sure that this is this is according to the patient's weight. Uh. Okay? Very, very important. Very common, it can cause cuts. Okay, skin laceration is very common. Now, a lot of times, right? Okay, this is this is tricked. Huh? Um, the air mattress that you buy may be smaller than the bed, and then every time you move the bed, the air mattress will move. This is an anti slip mat. Just use this one, then things will not move anymore. Okay, hygiene is everything. Okay, hygiene of skin. Okay, hygiene of your equipment. Okay, good. In sitting, going for outing, right? Uh, people with stroke, ah, uh, please take note, ah. Uh. The one to cause the dislocation. That's why we have to support as much as possible. Ah, uh, please, brother, be so down, right? Can use your shopping your bag, no problem. Position is very important. You don't want a contracture, then you just have to open up. So it's so far, okay. I usually don't recommend so far, but if you have no choice, uh, then this is what you do, okay? Okay. Pause. Okay, take photo. <laughs> ah, take photo, huh? Okay, people with uh, existing injury, you can only see on air cushion. But everyone else who, who just want to prevent, gel is cooler. Uh, a foam is much stable. That means you can sit longer. Before you buy anything, uh, make sure you know what is the person's weight. Because the heavier the person, the more they squash the cushion. Very good. Alright, so just a few tips here and there for the benefit of us. You just need to know a few things here. Um, armrest, okay, take note of that. Foot plate, okay. Um, because as sit with, I'm going to go through. Uh, how you select a wheelchair, okay? Okay, so uh, a lot of times when you go and buy a wheelchair, they ask you, is 16 inch or 18 inch? What do they mean? They mean the hip width. Hip width is C here. 
Ah, you see, now everybody sitting, right? Okay, put your hand by your side. Ah, now you put your hand on your bum bum, right? Near your thigh. Ah, that is your sit lift. You and I normally just take the 18 inch is good enough, but what? If someone is shorter than 1.5 cm, a uh, meter, right? 1.5 meter, usually they will need a smaller one, like 16 inch. Okay, uh, fat fat people, very cute, cute ones, uh, maybe a bit bigger. Okay, so if you ever need out, ask a, in Singapore, you can ask a OT. Uh, but if you see a home therapy like me, uh, even though I'm a physio, I can do that too. Okay, now, uh, F, okay, everybody put your hand on top of your head. Now, slide it back, like Michael Jackson. <laughs> okay, now, the, the angle where I slide down, that is up to put. Now, this is where you and I, we put our pillow. If someone doesn't have good head and neck control, right? You, you feel this part is, is very bony, right? Like it can happen, huh? Pressure injury can happen here. So, this is where you put the pillow, okay? Now, if you take a look at G and H, this is just telling you how high the height of your back support should be. But why are we so concerned? Because if someone cannot control their trunk and... If you give them a little bit more support, it may allow them to do more things like reaching for their favorite potato chips. Okay, now, um, armrest is just saying that if you put your arm by your side, right, at a 90 degree angle, this is where your armrest should be. Okay, now, um, if you take a look, right, SP here, the symbols here, just means that if you have scoliosis, you have to measure the left and the right because it will differ. Okay, now let's take a look at our seat depth. Okay, seat depth is whereby, okay, everybody, you put your hand at your back, at your butt, butt track there. Okay, now from here to the back of your knee, that's K. Right? When you take this length and you minus two inches, that is your seat depth. Okay, now why is this important? Because you have blood vessels and nerves going at the back of the knee, at the pop little region. The back of the knee is called pop lithium, okay? There are blood vessels, there are nerve as well. So you have to protect this area. Now, leg length, okay? This is where, um, if you put your leg firmly on the ground, okay, everybody try this. Put your foot firmly on the ground, okay? Now this, this distance between the four to your thigh, that's L, okay? Now, you have to bear in mind, when you wear shoe and when you don't wear shoe, the difference is at least one inch. When someone is on a wheelchair, if they spend a lot of time on a wheelchair at home, maybe they don't put their leg on a footrest, then you can take this length. But if today your wheelchair is to go out for out, you know, like medical appointment and you put the foot on the footrest, we always try to advocate for a 90 degree at a hip, at the knee, at the ankle. Okay, so some of those models can, can um, adjust the foot rest length. Okay, so why this is important is because if you don't do this well, the pressure along your thigh will be uneven. Then you may cause injury. Okay, so people who use a seat cushion must also account for that height. Okay, okay so the magic tool. Okay, everybody, I want you to slouch. Everybody, slouch. Okay, do you think you are having a good posture or bad posture? Okay, very good. Bad posture. Now, why is it a bad posture? Take a look at the pelvis. It's bending. Yes. Yeah. Bending. Yeah, you may slide also. Huh? <laughs> now, if your pelvis is tilting backwards, mm -hmm. there is no way you have a chance to sit upright. So, mm -hmm. this is where your seat cushion plays a part. If there is a slope of 2 degrees, but a lot of wheelchair out in the market cannot do this. They are usually flat. So what do we do? We compensate using a seat cushion so that our thigh is level, but at the same time, our pelvis is in upright position to mm. set your entire spine upright. Okay. Now, the other 2 inch comes from here. You see the foot rest? to the ground, it must be 2 inch so that you can clear obstacles. Okay, now, there is a big difference. Huh? If someone has a, a pressure injury, by doing a recline, you may cause a shear force. So a lot of times, when the wound is really, really bad, there's a tilt in space wheelchair that when you tilt, 
the pressure will be released from the buttocks to the back. Okay, so this is some, something uh, that a lot of people don't know. Uh. So this will cost you about 1,600. This may maybe cost you about 800. This one, normal wheelchair, maybe like 500. But all of them serve different functions. You're paying for the technology. Okay, now maintenance. Okay, I think this is something that we already mentioned in the slides. Okay, but uh, for those of you, if you know that A, I cannot do maintenance anymore, and um, you still for warranty, uh, find your vendor. Find your vendor. Usually a year of warranty. But, wow, say, say, uh, you hit one year, one day. Wow, then this is what you do. You go to the nearest bicycle shop, but if cannot, right, never mind. You call Mr. Eugene. He has been doing this since the age of 17. And he has been doing this for the last 50 years. He can fix anything. Okay? Fix anything. Okay? Now, I just want to highlight this to you, that every one of us, if you are above 60 years old, uh, if you do your means test and you have uh, at least a uh, fifty percent government subsidy, right? You can apply for senior mobility fund. Bear in mind, even though this subsidize the ninety percent, you only pay ten percent. You can only claim it in that category of new chair once in a lifetime. And there are many different categories in senior mobility fund. Right, but just bear in mind you can only claim it once a year, uh, once a lifetime. Okay, now, but if you are younger, <laughs> younger, there's something called assistive technology fund, right? Uh, same thing, they will subsidize 90%, you only pay 10%. You can buy a wheelchair many times, but bear in mind, uh, you only can claim up to 40k per lifetime. That means all, uh, all your equipment uh, add up together at 40k. Okay. Okay, so for those of you who think, hey, yeah, we got a new wheelchair. Ah, yeah, 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 papa, yeah, I want to throw away my old one. Please don't, please don't. Please don't. <laughs> there are many people who need wheelchair. Okay, so um, you can donate it online. All right, uh, recently, also the usual one is pass it on, right? Uh, but recently, I found that actually Terracell also got people donating it away. And then Campus Sonia is another one. They need spare parts, okay? So if you don't want your wheelchair, donate to them so that they can use a spare part to help another person repair for free. Um, and a lot of nursing homes will need a lot of wheelchair. So uh, in fact, for senior mobility fund, right, this person, the user must, must live for at least another three more months. But a lot of times when people are end of their life, towards the end of their life, right, they don't have that luxury of applying for their funding anymore. So this is where you can call up and ask, hey, do you want a uh, wheelchair? Do you want hospital bed? Do you want dynamic air mattress? Right? Because these are the people, like for example, Never Cancer Society, right? There are a lot of people dying. So you can just call and say, hey, you want not? Then we will make arrangements. Okay? So with that, ah, we just nice. One hour. Okay, come. Question. Do we have time for questions? So Yes, I think uh, somebody asked whether you can share the screen of the guy who can fix anything. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I guess they oh, may want oh. the contact number. But um, anyway, we'll be, but... yeah, we've recorded this whole session. So no worries, we'll be sending the, rec the link of the recording uh, in the post-event email. So mm. you, will, you can also re-watch Patient's entire talk over and over again. <laughs> wow, another hour of terror. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Huh? Yeah. This so you can, yeah, that's his number, right? Mr. Eugene Tan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Is that Eugene, uh, the guy that talks about focus on the family? Huh? I don't know whether he's gone to that talk before. <laughs> This one I'm not sure. I can go and ask him. I'm meeting him next week. <laughs> for patient, we have a hmm? question from ah, yeah. Juliet. Hmm. Yeah, the question is for a mobile elderly person who wears diapers in case of emergency, is there a need to use barrier cream? Hmm. I think this is where we, we go back to the risk factors, right? Um the one on injury. 
if if your loved one has poor nutrition or um and, and not moving, then I think it's best to play safe uh, to use a barrier pin. But um if they're moving around, they can move their butt cheek side to side, then I don't think it's such a big problem. Yeah. But of course the best person to ask is actually a nurse, a home nurse. Hmm. No problem. <laughs> okay. Yes. Any other oh. questions? So you lean by any. Uh, I, I noticed the for those uh pressure bristol at the tailbone of the, the back side, uh, mm. uh, to keep it dry by putting powder seems to to heal faster than the you know putting cream and putting a plaster. It, it doesn't dry like that, you know, because somehow I don't know why. Mm. It, it really also depends, right? Uh, okay, Singapore is very hot. Okay, it's very hot and humid. A lot of us, us are normal people are uh, even I will sweat. I uh, know my butt area will sweat, right? So heat, temperature, humidity, right, will play a very big role in the moisture. Now, of course, it really depends on the site of that injury. If the wound dressing cannot seal it well because of the contours of our butt, right, then it will not be airtight. Then moisture will keep on going in. Okay, so it really depends what is the person's body type, what condition they have, what nutrition status they are at, and the environment that they are sleeping in. All these are small little things that will contribute. Okay. Maybe it's, uh, you know, when they wear pampers, the pamper is like a big plaster already. <laughs> Agree? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Alex, you're right. <laughs> it's a fauna. <laughs> it's more than a plaster. It's a fauna inside. <laughs> okay. I think there's one question. You say 32 kg. Okay, 32 kg. Um, okay, to be truthful, right? Up to now, I haven't seen a dynamic air mattress motor that goes below 50 kg. In this case, right? Or in fact, in every, any case that you're using a dynamic air mattress, it doesn't mean right, you don't do the turning. For someone who is lighter than what the air mattress can, can, can support, you still have to do frequent turning. You still have to be vigilant to check. So all this you know, injury, this I-N-J-U-R-Y, don't forget that. Because buying an air mattress doesn't guarantee that there is no pressure injury. It doesn't guarantee, uh, it, it's not like, wow, insurance and all. Hey, both pao, eh, ha. It different better. Pao, see, ah. Different? No, ha. Uh, no, ha. Uh, it doesn't work this way, ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. Okay. If we change from sitting position to the left and right, how to make sure that he can balance his sitting posture? Very good question. Now, first thing first, we need to establish whether this elder can, does he, or she got good sitting balance. If can, then no problem. But if no, uh, then this is where we need to use like pillows and cushions and whatnot to support them. Okay? Because they, they, they don't have the strength to, to be upright anymore. So this is where we have to start to use equipment to help them. Uh, in fact, there are something called sitting clinic. That means when you go to a vendor, like a very old one, like say DNR wheels, right? They have therapists, occupational therapists who are working in the company who can do up a sitting clinic. Meaning they will look at, they work with your therapist and find out, okay, what's the main issue? And then they will provide like uh, advice on say, hey, I think uh, like uh, on the left side, there's more curvature. We should put a cushion there to support this curvature from getting worse. So, you know, people with scoliosis, right? To prevent the scoliosis from getting worse, right? Uh, this is where it will will tailor the wheelchair according to their body type. Okay, but I tell you something, uh, there's no such thing as perfect posture. You and I, uh, 
as long as we sit in one position for more than, like for me, five minutes is all it takes for me to be very uncomfortable. Uh, so that's this when my um, <laughs> my dance comes in. <laughs> I see Alex doing it also. <laughs> okay, uh, diabetic wound at the hip and takes a long time. Oh, okay, this one, huh? Um, the best person, sorry, uh, I cannot answer you this question because first of all, you need to assess what's the situation, assess whether there is any bacteria, assess what is the skin condition. And it really, like, it also depends on how sustainable it is to use a certain range of products. Right, so it, you, you may, some people may see it as, oh, I, I pay so much for a high quality wound product. But the problem is, if the body doesn't heal, right, then you have to ask yourself, what's the sustainability of using this? So it's not just, oh, I, today I tell you what, this one confirm the best. But you need to think long term. It also depends on how this person, the patient, react to the intervention. This way, we engage nurses. Okay? All right. Maybe we'll just take one last question. Hey, yo, what? Hey, this is a very good question. Coconut oil. <laughs> hey, okay, this one, huh? I'm not in the right position to ask you, uh, to say anything, okay? But uh, but uh, if you know any wound nurse right, then you must go and ask them, hey, what do you think of coconut oil? Yeah? And I can tell you, uh, they will tell you a very interesting story. Right? Uh, really, really. Uh, yeah, this, this story is not for me to tell, but if you know someone like that, you go and ask them. So I tell you, uh, who are you? <laughs> Sorry, uh. <laughs> this one not my story to tell. <laughs> hey, I'm a physiotherapist, uh, hello. <laughs> but I don't like that. Eh? <laughs> okay, one more question, just one last question. But if you got no question, uh, don't worry. Or if you got any question, right, see the our number is there, right? Email is there. Okay. Uh just just drop any email, okay, no problem. Okay, and, and Vanessa. And uh, Ying Yi has been doing up all these slides and, and um, they'll be distributing the ma materials as well. Um, you also have a lot of materials in your in your QR code, right? <laughs> ah, ah, there, 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 there. Ah, here. <laughs> so I hand it over to you, Vanessa. <laughs> so thanks, Peishan. I see like uh, you've had quite a lot of uh, interaction with all the participants. Thanks so much uh, for, for the very insightful sharing. Um, don't worry if you have questions, honestly, just directly WhatsApp patient, not a problem. Um, she'll definitely get in touch with you. Uh, and I think, um, yeah, just, just want to thank you guys all for showing up on a Saturday morning. Don't worry if you want to rewatch, uh, we will send it to the email that you registered for this, this today's talk with. We'll send it to that email. Uh, any questions, you can also always go to our website or you can reach us via WhatsApp. Yeah. All right. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, just look out for our postdoc email. And then, of course, anytime you need to reach us, you know where to reach us. Lah. Thank you so much. We'll see you guys. Uh, just stay tuned. We'll also share maybe upcoming events. So those who have subscribed to our WhatsApp broadcast list, uh, you guys will be hearing from us quite soon for our August talks. Okay. See you guys. Thank you so much. Bye.